Hey guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're back over on the YouTube account and we are gonna be breaking down the treasure scramble guide that is out from the AFK guides. Definitely wanna check this out because it has not only a lot of comps that we use, which are really the staple, the best in slot, but it also does contain a lot of substitutions. So if you're coming in here and you see there's a lot of heroes that you don't have, they do provide a ton of substitutions in here, which again is really, really important when it comes to building these out because you gotta have the heroes. Now, a lot of times you can copy the formations, but it might not be the most effective. So let's hop over, let's take a look at this guide and we'll break it all down. All right guys, so here it is, the Treasure Scramble Swamp Debuff Guide from the AFK guys. Big shout out to them. I will put a link down to the guide down below, but I definitely wanna look at this and kind of break it down. So looking at our left, it is the Awakened version of Shamira. Now, interesting enough in here, you can see we have Bronn, we have the Awakened version of Shamira. We have Olgath in there, but we also are running Rimuru in here, and we do have Ivan, so pretty good. And then, of course, we do have, um, as you can see, the Shroom Spooter right in here, which, of course, is going to have a taunt, going to have the ability to keep all of the damage off of your heroes. Now, looking at the subs, and again, this is probably one of the most important things. When it comes to substitutions, if you don't have Bronn, and if you do not have Bronn built out, you see we have Kinesa and Rook in here, and then we have a bunch of other heroes this was traditionally run with Edwin, if you guys remember, but you can also see Polina, Polina is in here, the Awakened version of Baden. Now, of course, within these formations, you have to make sure which heroes you have and which heroes you do have built up quite a bit. In addition, which heroes are also utilized in other formations, meaning that for the Treasure Scramble itself, your Team 1 and Team 2 might be set pretty well, but then, of course, when you start adding Team 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth, you might have to spread out these teams and the thinning of the teams does happen over time. So looking in here, Rimuru, we still do have um, Lady Simona in here. You can also see that Shuna is in here. There are a lot of substitutions. And again, looking in here, we see Villanelle, we see Malkyrie. These are heroes that were part of this team or not incorporated in this team um, in previous versions, which work incredibly well within the formations. As we continue to get more heroes within AFK Arena, you can also see down here the, te the two teams version so when we're still unlocking the, the Treasure Scramble as we are right now, you can see there are a couple of variations when it's the two teams versus again, three, four, and five. So looking at the heroes in here, then of course, when it comes to your beast, it is important and we talk about this a lot, when it comes to beast resonance, getting that level 18 beast resonance will give you all of the new beasts fully built every single time, which makes it super, super important to go ahead and break those down. Team number two, the Awakened version of Lucius. Now you'll notice in here, that we have a lot of defensive heroes. And of course, Hildwin as a very, very protective defensive mage. We have Milan in here, and we also do have Palmer in here, which of course, looking at the awakened version of Lucius, when you start looking at higher level deficiencies, he gets absolutely wrecked. Um, but when it is the same one, when it is a PVP aspect like this, works incredibly well. And then of course, Eugene is in there. At this point, you should already have a lot of copies of Eugene. Then, of course, for substitutions, we see Jerome in there. You can see Rimuru in there, as well as a few other heroes, which, again, have to be careful with who you're subbing in with the first team to build up the second team. But there are a ton of variations. And even looking at some of these, like Kelton, if you don't have Kelton at a 30960, so being fully built out, not really going to be worth the substitution. Even looking here with Adrian and Elise, so the dancers, um, if you don't have them at a plus 40 signature item, I would really be hesitant of building them out. And of course, looking at Naruko, looking at a couple other heroes, the higher and the better that you really do have them built makes a big difference. But you'll also notice that the symbols in here, if you're familiar with the, the plus equal to or, or less or greater than, because right here you can see if you don't have Meleon, um, it is going in Rimuru. If you don't have Rimuru, then subbing in one of these four, including Halos down here. Um, very, very important. Now, this is also running the Fox Fatel. Again, going to make a big difference on who you're leveling out and what levels they are on. Now, when we start looking at the Beast, you can see the priorities for the Beast right here or for the SP effect for the Awakened Heroes. Right here, we have the Awakened version of Sophia, and then we have Thane, we have Laika, and then we have the Awakened version of Athelia. Now, when it comes to the Awakened version of Athelia specifically, very, very strong burst damage, that, which is, again, the reason it's burst. And of course, looking in here is you're going to have a lot of crowd control from Amelia. You're going to see it with Tamaris. And then, of course, a lot of damage is coming out of Ithiel, but also provides a lot of buffs. And then the big, big damage, of course, is the Awakened version of Athelia, followed by the Owl for that immunity. Works incredibly well. And you can also see 
A lot of these subs do run true. Um, even looking in here, if you don't have a Thiel or Matria, you can put in Zorath. Zorath, again, is another hero where if you have Zorath built out, performance of the hero is exponential for damage. Talk about a burst hero when you start getting this hero to like a 30960. Does make a big difference. Now, of course, looking at Amelia, this is the instant crowd control. Same with Tamaris. Tamaris will actually dive bomb in, do some buffs with the enthusiasm ability, then provide some crowd control as well. So you have a multitude of crowd control in here surrounded around some burst damage. And then, of course, looking at the three team version. So the first one will be the two teams. This is going to be when you add your third team in here. And you can also see that we have Leica in here, which again is going to be a priority building this out and then also sitting on um, Panda Dumpty in here. Again, it's going to make a difference depending on what phase you are within here on who exactly you're going to be building out. Then team four, of course, we have the Ulnarem. This is still a very, very strong um, combination. And then you put in an SP effect with the Awakened version of Leica. We have Shuna in here and then Gwen. Again, be very cautious with Gwen because if you don't have her built out like I do not, it's going to make a big difference with her being built or not being built, with having furniture, with having engraving. And of course, looking in here, this is the old school. Kelton was a sub that was in here quite a bit, but we also do have Ezio in here, which again, works incredibly well. Naruko is in there, Malkyrie's in there, a couple other versions. And then of course, the 14 version is running Damia. Now, Damia, of course... When it comes to the ability to keep teams alive, Damia is literally the GOAT when it comes to AFK Arena. Um, when you put on the, the um, level two Mahira collection, it's super, super hard to kill the team, which again, makes the effectiveness of this burst way, way higher. Looking over the Awakened version of Belinda, I am happy to see it. Now, of course, it is based on the game mode that we have right now. So looking at team five, this is, what is running the Awakened version of Belinda. There's different debuffs that are coming with every single iteration of the Treasure Scramble, which again does make a really big difference. Now in here, we do have the Rock Lizard in here. You can see the Ice Crown in here as well. And then of course the substitutions. And when you think of this team is you have Jerome as a buffer, Aziz as an energy buffer, Lava Tune as a buffer. You also do have kind of the mage support with Gavis in there all allowing and really keeping not only Belinda alive, but amplifying the damage that Belinda is putting out, which of course she will alt and do damage so, so fast. It's kind of crazy to see how much that it does put out. Steel Team 6, this is another one that I love. Now this of course is kind of a stall team. When you look at the Awakened version of Brutus, he is an absolute diesel tank. We have the Taylene, which is going to come back alive. We know, um, Lucila, which again is going to come back alive. We have the Slumbering CEO is going to be the major damage dealer. We also have uh, Merlin, who is going to have to die more than once. And then, of course, Lucila is protecting Liberta. So this one is kind of a stall team is what essentially it used to be. But now it's the SEAL team because of Slumbering SEAL. And if you have a very well built out, I believe my SEAL is on level 22. The damage just goes through the roof exponentially as you're building out the SEAL, as you're building out this beast further. And you can also see, guys, there's a couple subs in here. We have Nyla in here. We have Flora in here. Hildwin's in here. Thorin is in here. Kalthar's in here. Those, of course, are, again, historically the really solid stall teams. And I actually do like Aethys in here. When you come to a tank and a pure tank that can take a lot of damage, he is probably one of the greatest tanks that we've seen. Very similar to, to um, Naruko, where very, very hard to kill in formations, making him work incredibly well. The Awakened version of Sophia, this one again, is kind of interesting because Tarnos is in this one. Now, of course, I have finally exchanged for Tarnos, so that one's in there. Uh, Villanelle, another one that, again, utility-wise, we've seen a ton. And then, of course, Damia is in there. Damio being one of the, the first priorities. So when you even look at the Stargazer, looking at Liberta, looking at Damia, Lava Tune, and of course, um, Lucila, they are really the four primary heroes within the Stargazer, Celestials, and Hypos that you do want to be building. Then, of course, the Ice Crown is in here for some more crowd control. Works very, very well. Bonus team is the Swolus. Now, the Awakened version of Solus has actually started phasing out a little bit. But when you think of this team itself, when you put the Awakened version of Solus, who, of course, summons her little water pixies or sprites. And then you put Gwen in there. Um, or excuse me, not Gwen. I apologize. This is Nevi. I know I called Nevi Gwen last time. But if you put Nevi in there, Nevi has the ability to actually buff up all of those. And then, as you can see, the Ibis is here, which, of course, this is a super, super strong. It's going to be PvP heavy. We already know. Um, but when you look at a, the ability for a beast to buff up everything, I already got this one up to level 18, which is working incredibly well. 
going to be using a lot of game modes. Curse Realm, Nightmare Corridor. Then, of course, the Treasure Scramble. We are going to see this beast used in its entirety. You literally put some of the best aspects of different beasts and different heroes together. Stack them all onto one beast itself, which, again, is going to work incredibly well. All right, guys, so that is going to do it. Again, I will put a link down to the guide below so you can check it out. Make sure you bookmark these. Make sure you follow the AFK guys because their guides are absolutely amazing, spot on. So, again, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.